thing that, uh, you know how I've been, been looking over the word that pastor prophesied for 2014, and whenever there, there is something that's repeated twice or 13, or 13, or three times in the word, it always means listen, listen, listen. Verily, verily, I say unto you. And an, another thing, check me if I'm wrong, Pastor, but one of the other, there, I think there were three things in there that said it three times, and one, one of them was study, study, study. Is that true? Pastor said, he don't know. Do you have the word with you? Well, I know it. I know it. Because one of them was real estate, real estate, real estate. Remember me, remember me, remember me. And the other was study, study, study. Okay. Has anybody been study, study, study? Come on. Whatever your situation is, and God's allowing a whole lot of situations, a whole lot of situations to show us our need of Him. Amen. And see, if we, if we study out the promise, if we study, it will be in our spirit. So when this mess comes up, we can say, oh, no. But the, the, the word says, oh, no. Uh, last week I was going to pray in agreement with somebody uh, about a situation with their child. And they said, well, we can't agree against their will. And I'm going, devil is a lie. Yes, we can. But they didn't believe that. And so I couldn't agree with that. Amen. And let me just tell you, see, and that's why study, study, study. I hadn't been in uh, the book of, where, where is Gomer, Pastor? Um, is that Hagee? Um, uh, it's, it's one of the little prophets. Remember the, the, it, the prophet that uh, God said, go marry the prostitute? Her name was Gomer. So you don't have to know chapter and verse. I know the word is in me pertaining to that. And he said, I'm not going to marry no whore. And God said, go take her to be your wife. And he took her to be his wife. And she was all right for a while. Church of the living God. But then she started going back to her own way. She started painting up and going out on the, and his, the prophet's heart was broken. Hosea. Hosea, okay. Was broken. And I can't remember if God, but God, the Holy Spirit said, pray the prayer of Hosea. And I'm, I'm going, all right, God, you go. It immediately came to my mind. You think you can't pray, pray against, especially your children. Amen. Against somebody's will, you can hem them up on every side. Hallelujah. And Gomer, she went out and the, the prophet prayed that her suitors would no longer have affection for her would find her repugnant, would turn away and have no need of her anymore. And then God said, go get her now. Because all of the ones that she was laying with, they didn't want her anymore. Amen. They turned away from her. They didn't find her pleasing anymore. And the Spirit of the Lord said, pray that prayer. And I'm going, yes, sir. You see how if you study, study, and you the word, what did Yeshua say? If I abide in you, and you abide in me. He's the word. He is the word. The Holy Spirit can jerk that stuff up. To when somebody says one thing. That sounds naturally normal. You can't pray against their will. <laughs> oh yeah. It, it may be their will to be in all kind of stuff. Your spouse. It may be their will to be in all kind of stuff. But you can pray to where the Holy Spirit will go after them and will hem them up. Amen. And that's what the Holy Ghost is saying. You think that I can't get to people just because they've chosen something? He doesn't choose for them just like he doesn't choose, but he can make it so daggum uncomfortable that they come back home. Remember the prodigal son? He went out and had riotous living. And then one day he looked around when the famine hit and nobody gave to him, the scripture said. Nobody gave because he was not sowing anything. So often we come for, and even we come to church, and, and we should, to, to get a word. To get a word. But we come for more than to get a word. We, we come to bless one another. But sometimes we're all looking for the blessing 
and nobody's blessing. Amen. Amen. And Yahshua said it's it's more blessed for us to give than to always, always be looking for someone to do to me. Well, I have need, I have need. Well, sow something. The prodigal, the prodigal son didn't sow anything. That's why in famine nobody would give to him. He hadn't sown any seed, y'all. No, no kindness. No. He was busy spending his living in riotousness. Righteousness. But one day he came to himself. One day he came to himself and he said, this is crazy. He said, I could be a slave in Abba's house and have more than this. And he turned around and went back to the father's house. Just like Gomer turned around and went back. Why on earth, Holy Ghost? But, <laughs> okay, because this is not in here at all. Bless the Lord. But we're changing our name. But see, that, that's just it. Um, our nature has changed. We don't have uh, just natural things to rely on. When we came to Christ, we, we got a supernatural nature and we got a supernatural God to work on our behalf. We're new creatures. And you might say, well, we're not acting like it. We still are in the kingdom. Even if we're the lowest in Abba's house, we still got Father on our side, Abba on our side, Yeshua on our side, Holy Ghost trying to lead and, and direct us. And my Bible says, if God is for you, who can be against you? But you got to step out. you got to believe that your God is greater than your circumstances. Okay? Um, okay, so we're talking about changing everything about our life that uh, to line up with kingdom destiny. Um, the first thing, oh, wait, I wrote down, I don't know which one comes first, second, okay. Change your name first, change your name, change your name. Um, another thing that we need to change is our fruit, our image, if you will, our image. Because Romans 8 says, Romans 8, 29, it says that we are predestinated to be conformed to what? The image of his son. 829, Romans 829. Okay? So you might say, well, it's just the way I am to produce this. Well, you need to get to changing. If it doesn't look like Yeshua, if it doesn't produce the fruit like Yeshua, the fruit of the Spirit, then we need to begin yielding to the Holy Ghost to give us a change of our image. Because we're predestined. That's what Father has predestined. Trina is predestined to be conformed to the image of, of Christ, whether she's a teacher, whether she's working in sales, whether she's working uh, uh, at, with an author, she still is to carry the image of Christ. She's still an ambassador for Christ. Whether she's a teacher, whether she's a business person, it doesn't matter. Whether you're a stay-at-home mom, it doesn't matter. We're still destined. We're predestined. Now, our destiny and our purpose in God, kingdom purpose, may be entirely different here. But we bear the image wherever we go. Okay? We bear the image. And that's what the Holy Ghost is working on until the, the day of Christ. Until the day comes, when he comes back for us. That will never cease. Now we can cooperate. Like they say at Southwest, don't make easy hard. You know, it, it's a, <laughs> we laugh about it. Uh, like when you're going through security, listen to what the people say and don't make easy hard. It's not that hard. Just take off the stuff and walk through there. But no, you have people that don't listen, and then they go through and it beeps, and then they have to pat them down, they have to strip them down, and do everything. Don't make easy hard, people. I think about, um, who was the judge? Samson. Samson made easy hard. He still fulfilled destiny. His destiny was to rid the area of the Philistines. But because he went after his flesh with Delilah and with the other, he 
loved Philistine women. There we go again. Loved the, un, uh, the ungodly. That didn't change God's destiny for him, but he took it the hard road. He died blinded, but he still took those pillars down. He still fulfilled his destiny, but he didn't have to go that way. Do you, do you see? God didn't do that to him. He did it. He did it. Okay? So, um, remember our, our image is not just our facade. It's what people see, y'all. It's what people, our walk, it's how we walk. Uh, I wrote down here, have you all ever heard of uh, dress for the, you know, people here, uh, dress for success? But they, they always tell you in business, dress for the job that you want, not the job that you're in. I don't care if you're the janitor there. If you want to be in management, don't dress like no janitor. Dress for the job, portray the image. And I was reading in the paper yesterday about all these job fairs, and they said the first image that they have of you when you walk through the door, that's 90% of the interview right there. I learned that from the pageants. You got 10 seconds. And they either go yes or no, and then they delve deeper. You got 10 seconds. So it does matter. What's on the, what image you are producing. They don't have time to look at your heart. Are you producing excellence in everything you do? The scripture says, do all to the glory of God. Do all to, whether you're sweeping the floor, whether you're, you're carrying the mail, whether you're teaching a class, do it all to the glory. Eat, drink, walk, Talk, do it all to the glory of God. That's what the scripture says, okay? So, um, so our fruit, our name should be changed. Our fruit or our image needs to line up with our destiny. Um, I wrote down here, there should be visible signs that we are, we belong to who we say we belong to. They should see more of <coughs> Yeshua's goodness in me, godliness in me, kindness, love in me, than they see of my temper. Not saying I never lose my temper, but they should, that should not be, oh yeah, I know. That should not be the fruit that they see most of. John the Baptist even, he said, I must decrease that he can increase. We need to be decreasing more than we decrease in. Okay? And if we don't, we may never get to our destiny or we may get there hard. We may get there hard without all the blessings that Father wanted to give us. Uh, just as an example, remember when uh, Peter, uh, when Christ was hauled away right before his crucifixion, and he told Peter that he was going to deny him. And Peter was around the fire, and the little girl that was, well, there were several people that said, he's one of them, he's one of them. And Peter said, no, I'm not. And it says, and he cussed, he cursed, and other thing, trying to fake what he was. And the little girl goes, no, your speech berays you. It's like betrays you. She's going, no, you with you one of them. No, uh-uh. You, you were with the Galilean. And the other person said, he was with the Nazarene. Your speech betrays you. I can tell by what you're saying that you're one of them. Even though he cussed. And he said, I don't know him. And they're going, yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. And that's what the Spirit of the Lord is saying right now. And what I found interesting, that the Scripture doesn't say your speech betrays you. It says it berays you. And I'm going... Was that a typo or what is that? And I, to be Ray, you, and I looked that up and it says it makes it very clear. It's like manifestation means take the cover off, your street, your speech be raised you. Yeah, it makes it real clear who you're with, real clear. It makes manifest. So our speech should be something that, uh, 
that changes also, but your speech cannot change until your thought pattern changes. You cannot get and have no word in you and speak the statutes of God. Okay? Your speech will betray you. Alrighty? Uh, also, within the change your name uh, category there, we need to have unity within ourselves first. Unity of, I think that's what integrity means. It means 